Hello, I'm Robert, and this should tell you how to protect yourself from COVID-19, and based on the advice from the WHO. And the, I help people who are scared on, on, uh, in, uh, over the internet with the Facebook group Doomsday Debunked. And I hear very often from people in the United Kingdom, and they just don't know how important these instructions are. It should be absolutely automatic. If you're living in the UK, we don't know if anyone you meet could have COVID-19. You absolutely have to do this. It has to be as automatic as putting on the seatbelt when you get in a car. You simply shouldn't be going around unless you're doing this. And if you do that, you will save your, your lives and both of you are potentially and the people that you could infect and so you're also stopping all the transmission chains that go through you to maybe other people. It's very, very important. And people don't realise how important it is because of a false analogy with the flu. So with flu, then just washing your hands and doing these other instructions will not completely stop it because flu is carried out on tiny, tiny little droplets just when you breathe in and out. So if you were sitting in a room and you did all these things, you had a distance of two metres and you spent enough time in the room, you could eventually get the flu. But you won't get this. Because the COVID-19 is only transmitted by the larger droplets of coughs and sneezes or when you talk. If you start to talk like this into your, say, hello, you talk, talk into your mouth, you, you get little, little droplets appear on your palm, you feel on your palm. And it's those can also uh, transmit it to someone else. And you can also get it from them. So if someone else could have COVID-19, especially someone's coughing or it's got a, they've got a fever or whatever, someone's sick in your house, then don't be right up close like that when you're talking because that also can, set, can give you COVID-19 from them. So how do you stop it? Then these are the four things you have to do. You have to wash your hand thoroughly, hands thoroughly. So I'm going to show in a minute how you do that. You have to stay one or two meters away from anyone coughing, sneezing or talking. You've got to avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth. So the only way it gets out of people is through those talking, um, coughing, sneezing or talking. The only way it gets in is through your eyes, nose and mouth. It can't get in through your skin. So um, what you've got to do, the way it can get to you then, is if someone is very close to you, then the droplets go directly from them into your eyes, nose and mouth, when they cough, sneeze or talk. Or it can get to you if their droplets get onto a surface, you touch the surface and then you touch your eyes, nose and mouth. That's the only way it can get in. So if you can stop both those methods, so the distancing one or two metres stops it coming directly from the other person, it can't get in that way. So now, if you don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth at all, ever during the day, you wash your hands before you touch them, they can't get in that way either. So that is why it is so different from the flu. And that's why these instructions are so important. So, you, so that's the one about avoid touching your eyes, nose or mouth. So you can scratch your ear if you, if you need to. But most people would find it easier to just get out of the habit of touching your face at all, except obviously when you need to. And then when you need to, you wash your hands first very thoroughly. And then the final one is you've got to avoid um, that if you cough or sneeze, then try to get into the habit of coughing into your elbow so that you don't, when you're with other people, so that your cough doesn't, doesn't go over to them. And you can also cough into tissue and immediately put the tissue into bin. But most places you don't have, if you're sort of out in the, sh the shops or something, you're not necessarily going to have a bin immediately to a hand. Or if you're walking in the street or something, you get a cough for a sneeze. So, um, and it is easily destroyed. So it's just a little bit of genetic information mixed up with some protein. And you get a bit of soapy water or a alcohol, alcohol hand rub of 60% or more and you will just destroy the material that it's made up of. It's not a living organism really, it's just a chemical and one that can be destroyed by soap. 
And if you do that study as the expert, you can say, what, what, and I'll just bring that up. So he, he is just, uh, here he is, let's go down and actually find it. He is speaking in Geneva days after he'd left Wuhan. And this is what he said, I won't give to the whole thing, but you can listen to it if you want. So I'll bring that up, and then we can have a listen to what he said. Let's play the very big bit, big bit. And you will be able to say the same as he's about to say, if you, if you are completely thorough about doing this. Okay, I will go on to Jason Gay. Oh, see, that's why I wasn't wearing a mask. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. You know, I don't have COVID-19. I'm very low risk. I, you know, I did, I, and, and, you know, I had an hour-long grilling um, before I, I did this when I came back, anyone coming back from travel. So um, yeah, he go on and explain why, he, he, uh, you know, what happened there. So he, he was extremely careful in uh, Wuhan, and uh, he talked about various other measures he did, like basically social distancing things, to make sure he was no, nowhere near anyone, and then and then also wash his hands every half hour. And he did this very, and he was very careful about about all this, so he knows he hasn't got it, because it's not transmitted like flu. So now you've got to wash your hands very thoroughly. And you don't need to, remember, you've got to wash your hands before you touch your eyes, nose and mouth. So I'm, when I go off to shop in the street, then in, in our village, which is half a mile away, then I just don't touch my hands, eyes, nose or mouth. Go there, buy the things. I keep a distance, make sure nobody's, if anybody's talking to me, they now have this thing. We've got to stand back from the counter if, they, if they're just serving you. So it's no problem about it because everyone is doing it. It could have been socially difficult before, but now, I mean, it's just expected. So you are standing back. And if anyone wants to talk to me, I just say, you know, keep a distance. And they understand nowadays. So, so then I come back, I wash my hands, and I actually wash all the surfaces, the handles I used to get into the house, just to be thorough. And I actually wash the outside of the packages because someone might have touched it. It doesn't last very long on, on, on those things, but why not be safe and do that as well? So there's no way that COVID-19 can get to me. So, uh, so I know I'm safe, I know I, I don't have COVID-19. And so you, 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 you can do the same. Now we've got to see how to wash your hands properly. So this, uh, first of all, demonstrates the idea. I'm not, I don't think I've played the whole thing. But what you, 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 if that's like the soap, right, that black, but it's made so you can see it. Now you go through this various process. You, you rub your hands in different ways and you eventually you can see at the end, and you're finally doing the thumbs and then and, and, and nails and then goes around the wrists and then you can see the hands are completely completely black so uh, so that's that's the basic idea of washing yourself thoroughly so I'll, sh I'll do it twice there's no harm in doing it twice so first of all Dr. Ted Ross Andra. Here are the steps recommended by WHO to follow. So, and here's step. First of all, wet your hands with water. So do this while he's, while he's doing it. Watch the video a few times. Then you cover your, your hands with soap. Rub your hands palm to palm. So do that as he does it. And then you do the right hand palm over left. And then the other way around. And then you do them arms together and fingers interlocked. So if you do that as he does it, then um, then this thing, then you get into the habit of doing it in this sequence. You don't need to remember this sequence. Just do it a few times, and then it become automatic in the thumbs. And then the fingernails into the palms. And then the other one. And then that's you done. And it, it, it doesn't take that long. And then then you rinse your hands with water, and then you dry your hands, and you close the tap with the towel, and then put the towel in in the use to turn off the tap, and after you dried your hands, and then you put that in the bed, and that's it. And you, if you do that, you also will be safe. And so let's do it once more with a slightly a different one. 
Let's do it with this one. Wet your hands with water. Let's wet your hands with water. And palm to palm on the back. You really, that, I miss out the Where's the soaping bit? Uh, she's doing it very fast. Let's see, go back to there. Wet your hands, apply soap. Palm to palm, front to back, interlocking. Palm to palm, interlocking. Clasp and rub on both sides. In your thumbs and palm circles. And that's you done, but she does the next bit around the wrist, so you can do that as well. And then you, you rinse and dry with the towel. And then put it in the bin. So, so just uh, so so that's what you have to do, and just get in the way of doing that all the time, and then you're protected from COVID-19. So, just one more thing to say is that uh, a lot of people are still are doing elbow bumps and things like that. And, uh, don't do that. You and, and don't shake hands, don't break the one or two meters thing to do that because it can be passed hand to hand. And if you do elbow bumps and you're kind of talking, it can pass that way as well because you're too close. So, uh, if when you're greeting someone, don't do an elbow bump and chat and joke about you're doing the elbow bumps like the royal family were doing at Meghan and, and at Harry and Meghan's last, last event. And they were doing, well, I can joke you, I look, we've got elbow here. Yeah. You could know all the the COVID-19, if they any of them had them, would be going from person to person. And Prince Charles was going really right up close talking to people. They just hadn't been, they can't have understood the WHO guidance or not listened to it. And it's not been on the news. It's, it's really, this is not being explained properly. And that's why I have to do it. it we should have constant ads in the UK explaining this thoroughly and properly like I just did. And so, so it's the same with and, uh, with it's the shaking hands. Just be sure to do it properly. Just, and then if you do, if someone does shake your hands and you just can't avoid it, it's happened. You know, it's all over. Don't worry. You haven't got COVID nineteen just by shaking hands. You've just got to make sure to wash your hands at that point. Um, and then don't worry too much if, if even if someone does cough in your face or something like that. It is actually not easy to get COVID-19. So um, in, it's, it's normally requires, uh, even people who are living in the same household, only one in 10 will get it. And even if this, they're in the household, you're for, uh, for all the way through, for the, uh, someone who has COVID-19, even the mild case, they could be infectious for about four weeks. Two weeks for the duration of illness, another two weeks after, um, two days before it starts. So four weeks and, and, and a bit, probably. And uh, unless it's a very, very short duration, a couple of days. But even with all that length of duration of possibility of infecting, still only one person in 10 gets COVID-19 from living in the same house, household with someone else. And yet it's spreading so fast, I think partly because of the, the long in, uh, quarantine period. I'm sure they're still studying it. So, so that... So don't feel that just because some stranger has coughed in your face that you're going to get it. It's exceedingly unlikely. But to be really, really sure about it, do all this stuff that I just explained. And this is especially important indeed in your own house with other people in the house. That to still wash your hands before touching your eyes, nose and face, mouth. Because uh, that will be how it would give any of them have COVID-19, that'll be how it gets from them to you. And if anyone in your house has a cough uh, and, and a fever and has a possible COVID-19, then I recommend you have a read of the WHO guidelines. You should, according to WHO, you should really have a clinician come and visit you and assess your house and decide whether it is suitable for isolating a mild case of COVID-19. They should, of course, die, test you and check if you've got it. And then, if you have got it, they will then advise you. They would tell you that you have to wear a mask, that the patient, that the if you've got COVID-19, you'd wear a mask and your carer wears a mask whenever they're in the same room as you. 
and they have to wash their hands whenever they leave the room and the various other precautions they have to do and so uh, but I recommend if you are in that situation that there's someone in your room house and you've been told it's suspect COVID-19 and in the UK at present I hope they change this very quickly they just don't test it then I recommend reading the WHO advice and really being super cautious about what all this washing the hands but also there's rather more that you have to do and so I'd have a read and then do your best approximation of it remember that it is only one chance in ten of uh, getting it from them and make sure there's only one carer who sees who, who has any contact with them they stay in their room in their bedroom they uh, ideally they use a separate bathroom and all to their own they have all, all their own um, cutlery and things the uh, only one person you know, has actual direct physical contact uh, ideally the healthiest person in, in your household youngest healthiest person but you can read all that on the WHO website so I'll, I'll put a I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description of this as well but I'll, I'll link to this page and I, I, I uh, make sure it's got something about that as well I, I'll, I'll put a link I'll put I'll put the links to the WHO as well in the, in the, in the video description the WHO care for looking looking after the uh, uh, someone else in the same house because quite a few people in the United Kingdom will be in that situation just now we have uh, I, I'm not sure the last figure is officially 8,000 but it's probably many more so quite a lot of people but those are the ones that are official and diagnosed and many of those would be in hospital and they, they just don't diagnose you unless, unless you have at least one night overnight stay in hospital and normally the four times as many that are, that don't require any hospitalization than the ones that are so there may well be another 10 20 thousand people in the community who have the mild COVID-19 who have not been detected in the last 12 days when it's increased from 500 to over 8,000 and just detecting mainly the hospitalized cases so there will be lots of people in the UK, United Kingdom who are now having to care for someone on their own in their house without getting any clinical nobody coming in and clinically assessing the situation they're in and telling nobody telling them clearly what they have to do and uh, so and expect expect to just find out from websites and things from the NHS inform or something, but it's not, it's it's not really properly explained. And so anyway, I hope this helps, and uh, I'm doing my darndest to try and get the United Kingdom to change its policy. And if anyone has any ideas about how to do that, to to align just align itself with the WHO. On all the things it says. Anyway, I've said plenty of videos about that. So, uh, but this is how to protect yourself. And this should be on TV every half hour. I should think you know, every should be constant ads on the BBC telling you to do this because it's so so important. Or if you join our Facebook group, do say debunked. Then do please read the rules at the top of the group. Uh, we're there here to help people who are very scared. Um, the rules are very important because it's quite a fraught situation. You know, panic people panicking and so on. And with the rules are what make it manage to work at all and work as well as it does.